Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. Going to be taking a look at the brand new iMac 2019 edition. This is the top of the line i5 processor, 3.7 gigahertz, turbo boostable to 4.7 gigahertz. It is the base configuration though. It only has eight gigabytes of RAM. It has the Radeon eight gigabyte video memory card and it has the two terabyte Fusion hard drive. So it is the base model that you can purchase from the Apple store. It hasn't been upgraded with any of the additional possibilities such as the i9 processor, SSD storage, or extra RAM. Now, the reason I thought I would try this out was to see how well it would cope with video production and photography. Now, most of the time with my video production, I'm working with a combination of HD footage along with 4K on the same timeline. And I'm usually incorporating at least two to three layers of video at the same time and applying multiple audio effects and just a few visual effects such as the Lumetri color and maybe some transitions, maybe the Unsharp mask and a few different features to enhance the video. So I'm not a very intensive user of video, but I do require that the usage of the software, which is Premiere, is seamless without any delay and without having to wait around too long. And certainly when I'm working on the timeline, it's really important for me that there is seamless scrubbing of the timeline backwards and forwards. Cutting of my clips can't be interrupted with any delay coming from the computer. And I have put this to the test over the past few days and thankfully I can confirm that even as the base configuration without those additional upgrades, it is well and truly up to the task of video editing even with 4K. When I was initially doing my research, there was so many reviews about the top configuration of this model. So people had upgraded it to the i9 processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM and beyond, and the SSD storage. And they were kind of implying that if you're going to do video and take it seriously, that you should upgrade to that extent. But thankfully, I have found that the base configuration certainly does the trick. There is no need for a further upgrade for me. I might consider upgrading some additional RAM just to give it a bit more capacity to multitask down the track. But certainly as it is out of the box, it's been performing flawlessly. So there's been no delays at all in terms of editing. So in terms of comparisons, I am comparing it directly against my experience with my other Mac, which is the 2016 to 2017 seventh generation i7 processor in the MacBook Pro. And it was able to render out a five minute video which incorporated both 4K footage and 1080p footage in about six minutes. The iMac, the i5 ninth generation iMac, out of the box, rendered that same video in about two and a half minutes. So it's half of real time in terms of the rendering out, which for me is more than sufficient. My YouTube videos usually go for five to 10 minutes. Some of them go for 20 minutes. So essentially when it comes to rendering my final project, I'll be waiting no more than five to 10 minutes, which is really not a long time at all. Now, if you are a professional video editor, editing every day, working with very large timelines with more than two to three layers, then it may be worthwhile considering the i9 processor and also getting at least 32 to 64 gigabytes of RAM and going for the SSD storage in order to get the maximum efficiency out of the unit. And it should be able to handle those multiple clips on the timeline without any delay. I found that when I had over three layers of video, and if I applied things like the Unsharp mask onto one of the video layers, that I wasn't able to scrub in real time anymore. There was a lot of delay when I was going backwards and forwards, and a little bit of hesitation as I was editing, which is really annoying. So certainly if you are a high-end video editor, it may be worth upgrading to a much higher spec. But for me, and for most people perhaps, if you're just doing smaller YouTube type videos, whether it's in 1080p or 4K, I think the base configuration is probably gonna cut it. But as always, my advice is if you do have the budget, it's always worth going as high as you possibly can. In my particular circumstance, I wasn't comfortable spending four and a half thousand dollars on the iMac because that kind of puts it in the league of a top tier 
gaming PC in terms of price for specs. So if I was going to spend that kind of money, I probably would have gone for another solution. So at the budget that this comes in at, the looks that you get, the access to that 5K Retina display, which gives you an incredible resolution of 5120 by 2880 pixels with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I think the iMac i5, i ninth generation latest version is really a great option for most video editors and certainly worth considering. Before we wrap this video up, a quick look at the Black Magic Design disk speed test and the results were actually better than I expected for a Fusion drive. I was getting write speeds of around 600 to 680 megabits per second and the read speeds were anywhere from 790 to 2575 megabits per second. So the read speed was much higher than I expected and it's performed incredibly well. But as the results show you, if you're working with anything beyond ProRes or H.264, so if you're using Cinema DNG RAW, or 10-bit YUV, for example, if you've got raw footage coming out of a red camera or Blackmagic cinema camera, then you'll find that the 4K footage, especially at 50 and 60p, may not perform as well on the timeline and also you you might find significant delays when you're rendering that footage out to the disk drive, in which case it would be highly recommended that you do go for the SSD storage option. One criticism that a lot of people have made is the fact that it still has rather thick bezels on the front of the display, which I think is fair enough. It could be reduced and it's not really in keeping with the modern design aesthetic that we're seeing on their latest iPhones apart from the notch of course. So we're seeing a trend towards reducing the bezels around the phone and they haven't done this on the current generation of iMac in 2019 but I'm certain that by 2020 their model next year they will do away with these thick bezels and we'll see a much slimmer more attractive looking unit. So thankfully I can confirm that this latest 2019 i5 iMac top end configuration is capable of performing all of the video editing tasks that I've thrown at it so far. On a side note, I've also opened up some Photoshop files, raw files, and it's handling those files with absolute ease. So for a video editing or photographer's machine, this iMac is certainly more than capable. And if you are a high-end user working with very large projects on a daily basis, Yes, if you have the budget, upgrade to the i9 processor, SSD storage and max out that RAM. But if you're just using it for the occasional project, one or two projects a day perhaps, and you, you have basic requirements for video, this is going to be more than sufficient. So hopefully I've answered all of your questions in today's video. If I haven't, feel free to put them in the comments box below and I'll see if I can get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit me up with a like and also consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming videos. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.